In this video, we will talk about base and nucleophile strength. So to begin, we can, uh, we can talk about overlap because there is going to be some overlap between the two. And, and what I'm referring to is our, our characteristics that basically serve to contribute toward the strength of both a base and a nucleophile. And, and those characteristics are going to be one, pi bonds, two, lone pairs, and three, negative charges. So, so all, all three of these contribute toward uh, the strength uh, of, a, of a base and a nucleophile. So, so for that reason, you will, you will find that there is overlap and, and, and you know, you'll find that uh, certain atoms run, run parallel with, uh, with their strength and their nucleophilicity or their basicity as a result of that. Now, the next thing I want to mention is that when I am referring to a base in this video, I will be referring to a Bronsted base. And, and so remember from our previous video that we differentiated between a Brownstead base and a Lewis base, with Brownstead base being uh, a part of uh, a chemical reaction thermodynamically, while a Lewis base is part of a chemical reaction kinetically. And, and we demonstrated that with the Gibbs free energy diagram. But, uh, but anyway, as we move forward, when I refer to a base, I will be talking about a Brownstead base. So now let's uh, look at a, a portion of the periodic table of elements. And I can show B, C, N, O, F, C, L, B, R, and I. And, and I drew it this way so I can demonstrate the trend in electronegativity. with fluorine being the uh, most electronegative atom on the periodic table of elements. So, and, and by the way, this is actually pretty easy to memorize. Um, I, I would highly recommend doing it because you use these atoms so often that, uh, that you'll, you know, it's just good to know where they're at relative to one another and, uh, and, and also to, to be able to, to think in terms of what's more electronegative than, than something else. So, so anyway, it's, it's good to memorize. Now, if I compare a nucleophile to a base, what I will find is that as I move down this trend line, I end up with a stronger nucleophile. And if I move up the trend line, I end up with a stronger base. So, so why is that? Why, when I move down, I, I have a stronger nucleophile, and when I move up, I have a stronger base? Well, as I mentioned before, electronegativity is going to play a role in this, and, and, and what, I, what I'm referring to when I say that is, for example, if you have an electronegative atom, or a highly electronegative atom, that atom is going to be less willing to donate an electron pair to another molecule and and that's and that's the, the whole definition of a, of a Lewis base or a or a nucleophile because remember the definition states that um, one atom is, is going to have the ability to donate an electron pair to another molecule or another atom and and that other molecule or atom can also be known as an electrophile but but basically you know we're working with or, or we're thinking in terms of an ability to donate an electron pair and if you have an atom that is highly electronegative well that atom is going to be holding on to its electrons very closely and tightly to its nucleus so for those reasons um, the stronger nucleophile or, or the nucleophile uh, gain strength as you move down this this periodic trend and and and, and also in addition to that um, we also increase in atomic radius as we move down this trend as well and and when we increase in atomic radius what we are demonstrating is that uh, you have a a larger electron cloud if you will or or we basically have um, a greater distribution of electrons outside of the nucleus that are able to be distributed to another molecule or an electrophile. So, so for those reasons, that's you know that's why we end up with a stronger nucleophile as we move down this trend line. Now, let's let's talk about the base. And in order to talk about the base, 
I think it'll be beneficial to go back into uh, GenChem and think in terms of acids and their conjugate bases. So remember, the stronger the acid, well, we will end up with a weaker conjugate base. And, and that's, that's conjugate, keep in mind. So, so, uh, so conversely to this, if we have a weaker acid, we should relatively end up with a stronger base. So, you know, uh, and this can be verified too, by the way, by, by looking at uh, this formula where we have Ka times Kb equals Kw. And, and remember, Kw equals 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. And, and Ka is, is an acid dissociation constant. Kb is a base dissociation constant. And Kw is a water autoionization constant. So, so those, that's what all three of those represent. But basically, Ka is going to represent our acid, while Kb is going to represent our base. And, and so for those reasons, if we let me just change the colors up a little bit here. But, but basically, if we increase the value of Ka, in other words, make Ka stronger or make the acid stronger, well, as a result of that, Kb is going to have to be lowered in order to produce Kw, which is also known as 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. Now, conversely to that, if we have a, a weak acid or a low Ka, well, we can compensate for that by having a, a larger Kb, meaning a stronger, a stronger base, and, and that's referenced here with, uh, with the stronger base due to the, due to the weaker acid on, on this side of the equation. So, so anyway, uh, that's kind of the Ka times Kb equals Kw explanation to this. And, and you know, I think it's beneficial and sometimes helpful to uh, um, demonstrate something mathematically to help with your understanding conceptually. So, so now let's move forward and, and think now in terms of what we're, we're showing here on this periodic uh, table of elements. So if I have, for example, let's see here, HF, HCl, HBr, and HI, well, remember, HF is going to be our weakest acid. Well, HI is going to be our strongest acid. As a result of this, HF is going to produce the strongest base. and the strongest acid will produce the weakest base. And, and keep in mind too, when I'm, when I'm saying strongest, I, I mean everything is relative um, on, on these, uh, when I'm referring to strong and weak, uh, I'm not necessarily saying strongest, meaning the strongest ever, um, I'm just saying that it's strongest relative to to what we're working with here because I mean technically if you were to look at uh, you know if you were to go into a, a textbook for example you would see that um, you know HF for example is a, is a weak acid and its conjugate base is going to be weak as well but but what I'm simply stating is that it's the strongest relative to what we're working with here so so I want to make that clear as well um, and, and that can be demonstrated as I mentioned before mathematically by looking at the Ka times Kb equals Kw now what we're doing is we're moving up the trend line and as we move up this trend line we increase in the strength of the base and and keep in mind too when I'm referring to uh, an increase in, in base strength what I'm also um, referring to is an increase in a uh, base's affinity for a hydrogen because remember we are we are thinking in terms of the brownstead lowry definition and, and we're, we're thinking in terms of, of protons. So, so anyway, as we increase the, in this trend line, we, uh, we have a higher affinity for, um, for protons or hydrogens. So, so now that we, we've kind of mentioned that and 
We see the difference now between a strong nucleophile and a strong base in terms of electronegativity. Let's now think about how uh, a nucleophile and a base is affected by, say for example, steric hindrance. So, so if I were to demonstrate an example such as with a methoxide ion, let's see here. Let me see. Show a negative charge, or I can demonstrate something with a with a tert butoxide ion, and that's going to look something like this. And for my uh, molecule that that I want to react it with, we can we can demonstrate something like this, where we have hydrogen, hydrogen, make a good leaving group, throw a methyl over here for stability, H and H. And by the way, this is going to be my alpha carbon, and over here this is going to be my, my beta carbon. But, but either way, so now let's compare and contrast in terms of nucleophilicity and basicity. So, so this is actually going to serve as a much better nucleophile Then, for example, this would because we have a lot of bulk on onto this uh, onto this molecule relative to this one. So, so I mean, if we were to think in terms of bulk, we also have to take these into consideration as well. And and I suppose hydrogen doesn't take up too much room. Not, I mean, you know, in comparison to like a methyl group, but but I mean, it still takes up room. And and as a result of that, this this may have trouble entering into uh, into the uh, electrophilic center area. And so. If it has trouble doing so, and, and keep in mind we're looking at these as well and we're taking these into consideration, these big methyl groups, our bulky methyl groups, but, but instead of that, it may end up coming in over here and interacting with the hydrogen instead because the hydrogen is located on the outside of the molecule, whereas the electrophilic center is located on the inside of the molecule. And so if it has trouble gaining an access or entryway into the uh, inside of the molecule, it'll go outside and instead nab this hydrogen and therefore run an E2 reaction like so. And, and by the way the uh, the previous reaction with the uh, methoxide ion, anion um, that was that was an SN2 reaction so so you can see that there you know are, are a couple of different differences that are involved with uh, you know whether we're working with a nucleophile or or a base and and that can also play a role as far as you know, demonstrating that we are either working with an SN2 reaction or an E2 reaction. And, and let me just demonstrate that, that in this instance we are working with a base. And over in the other instance, we were working with a nucleophile. So I hope that was helpful. And uh, in our next video, we can demonstrate how nucleophiles and bases are affected by solvents. And uh, I will start that here shortly.